In this video, we're going to look at a coronal or frontal section through the heart. What this allows us to do is identify the major anatomical features of the heart, and in doing so, we'll also trace the pathway of blood um, as it travels through the heart, out to the lungs, and back. Um, so we're going to start by looking at blood that's draining from the head and neck area as well as the upper limbs. All of this deoxygenated blood is going to return to the heart through this structure, which I'll label number one, and this is the superior vena cava. We have an equivalent inferior vena cava that also drains into the right atrium, and this will drain all of the deoxygenated blood from below the diaphragm. So that's abdomen, lower limbs, essentially everything else. So the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava will both drain into this chamber, which is the right atrium. Now the right atrium, upon contraction, will pass blood into the right ventricle, the space here. And it does so through this valve, which we can call very simply the right atrioventricular valve. Now this valve also has an alternate name that you are responsible for, and this valve can also be called the tricuspid valve. These valves do have cusps, and in this case there are three cusps. We haven't really drawn that full anatomical detail here. But these cusps are anchored to the wall of the ventricle through these two anatomical structures. These structures here are called papillary muscles, and they are attached to these heart strings, uh, properly known as chordae tendinae. The anatomical structure of that valve prevents it from flipping inside out when the ventricles contract from the bottom up. And so that does not allow blood to backflow into the atrium, but rather forces blood up through this valve here, number eight, which is going to be our pulmonary semilunar valve. The pulmonary semilunar valve allows blood to travel into this region here, which is a large singular branch called the pulmonary trunk. Now when we see that term trunk, we think of a tree, and we know that that means this, this branch or vessel is going to split again. And it does so, it splits into both right and left pulmonary arteries. Now these are arteries because they are traveling away from the heart, but they do still contain deoxygenated blood. This blood will pass left and right to the lungs where it will pick up oxygen and then be returned back to the heart. And it's actually returned back to the heart in four vessels uh, that are arranged in two pairs. We can only see one pair in this diagram. And these are the left pulmonary veins, uh, veins returning blood back to the heart. The right pulmonary veins would be hiding here deep to the pulmonary trunk. These pulmonary veins bring blood back into the left atrium. And from the left atrium, blood will pass through the left atrioventricular valve to reach the left ventricle. This valve, the left atrioventricular valve, also has alternate names that you're responsible for. It can be referred to as the mitral valve and also as the bicuspid valve because it only has two cusps. It does have the same anatomical features as the right atrioventricular valve in terms of having papillary muscles and chordae tendinae. When the heart contracts from the bottom up, the left ventricle, which is a very strong muscular um, ventricle, will push blood through the next semilunar valve, which is our aortic semilunar valve. And this will actually allow blood to pass behind this pulmonary trunk and into the aorta. If you're curious about where blood travels next, I have additional videos that tr trace the path of blood uh, from the aorta up to the head, neck, and upper limb, and also down to the abdomen and lower extremities. 
Now there are two additional anatomical features that I want to show you on the heart that can be seen um, in an adult heart that are remnants of fetal circulation. So here in the wall of the right atrium, there is a um, oval shaped depression that in the adult heart we call the fossa ovalis. And the fossa ovalis is a remnant from fetal circulation when the right atrium and left atrium had a direct continuation. So in the fetal heart, that depression is actually an opening or a hole, and it's called the foramen ovale. The other structure you'll see is a connection between the pulmonary trunk and the aorta. And in the adult heart, this is known as the ligamentum arteriosum. It's a remnant of a duct or another opening called the ductus arteriosus that was present in the fetal heart. The purpose for both of these anatomical structures is essentially the same. In the fetal heart, we don't send blood to the lungs for oxygenation. That actually happens through the circulation with the mother. And so we'd, we would like to avoid this pathway as much as possible. So we allow blood to travel from the right atrium directly into the left atrium. And if any blood were to follow this pathway, we then allow it to pass from the pulmonary trunk into the aorta directly as opposed to going to the lungs.